Hello, 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 and welcome to another fantastic episode of Anarchy Among Friends Roundtable Discussion. Before we get started, let me remind you that we are covered by the BIPCOT No Government License, which allows for the reuse and reuse and distribution of podcasts by anyone and everyone except for governments and the bludgies thereof. You can learn more about that at BIPCOT.org. That is B-I-P-C-O-T dot O-R-G. We're also covered by Brandenburg v. Ohio, 1969, uh, which ruled that the government cannot punish inflammatory speech unless that speech is, quote, directed to inciting or producing imminent lawless action and is likely to incite or produce such action. Therefore, everything we say here on the podcast is hypothetical. And, yeah, and uh, more than that, there's always the First Amendment. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> for legal reasons, that's a for, joke. For legal reasons, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That allegedly. For legal allegedly. Reasons for yeah. allegedly. 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 Hypothetically. <laughs> yeah. Chris just threw up one of those memes on uh, the Hoot Nanny Roundup page the other day with the, the, for legal reasons, that's a joke. Whenever it's like whenever Boog Boys start talking about taking direct action on Facebook. For legal mm-hmm. reasons, that's a joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they do that in the uh, uh, one of the the Discord chats I'm in. Like whenever they say something, they'll put they'll put hypothetically at the at the top of their comment. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then their comment, yeah. Nice. It's kind of, it's kind of funny. <sighs> oh, but yeah, this is uh, this is episode ninety two. Wow. Which. It's, it's, it seems like a... they're going by fast to me, but that's because I'm skipping the weekly, yeah, you know, every, like the in between. Yeah. yeah. yeah and like, we've like always we're... done it every two weeks. And that's like my contract with Kevin and the boys is that I get to do this for like two hours every two weeks and none of them fucking bother me. Um. Well, like, <laughs> like, like that's our normal thing and we're, and we're cool with that. Right. But then like everybody's so fucking bored right <laughs> now. Well, you guys might be bored. I I am an essential worker, so no, oh, yeah. I'm kind of a big deal, right? But right. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm still working. So. I'm seven. I'm seven weeks into a shelter in place, Jesus. and ours got extended the other day to, to May thirty first. Again, ours technically goes until the twenty sixth. But uh, last night I had a bonfire, and all my neighbors came over. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> more people out. are disobeying. Like more people are disobeying now, and it's great to see people you, just being like, "I'm fucking over this." This is. Yeah. Did you see? Did you see the pictures out of Southern California, out of out of Oceanside? Um, the yeah. beaches, yeah. They, yeah, they the the governor closed the beaches because people were like, "Fuck you, I'm going to the beach," right? So Newsom Newsom signed the EO and he closed the closed the beaches down there, and there were there were thousands of people in the streets. Yeah. Like, I mean, there was no rioting or nothing, but it was, like, thousands of people, like, you know, suck at news. <laughs> yeah. Making it very, very clear, I don't care what you say anymore. It's yeah, and I just saw a post from somebody that shows, like, a bunch of people on the beach and saying the cops just gave up enforcing it. And everybody's like, fuck you, news. <laughs> yeah, Ocean, Oceanside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also in California, um, Modoc County, which is the northeastern corner of california it would be part of the state of jefferson if jefferson existed um mm-hmm. no no cases no deaths from covid at all but you know being california they're still under control of of newsom in california so they're still enforcing that lockdown up there and the the, the county sent a letter to newsom hey let us off and newsom didn't respond so now they're like all right fuck you we're opening yeah yeah, we're just no. It, it, no one's going to enforce this anymore. And that's the thing that everybody seems to forget when they try to make, co- you know, say, well, it's not the cops fault. It's not the cops fault because the cops don't write the law. No, it absolutely is because those laws cease to exist if the cops cease to enforce it. So these yeah, executive they're nothing orders, but ink on paper if they don't have yeah. people with guns willing to enforce it. Yeah. I'm like uh, you guys saw about the, the city in uh, New Mexico, right? No. Yeah, the one that shut down. No, where the where the governor literally put roadblocks 
on the roads that it, leading into town, and oh, I thought that was in Texas. Okay, New Mexico. Uh, liter- <laughs> literally, like shut the town down like five five p.m. to eight a.m. curfews and just shut literally shut the entire city down because the mayor said, "Oh, we have a COVID problem," and the governor in New Mexico is kind is is a is a pretty big Karen. Yeah, and she she shut the whole city down. Jeez, like literally, state police and national guard manning roadblocks outside, outside the city. And um, Jeez. just for historical reference, um, the city and the city in the movie Red Dawn, that's in New Mexico. Oh. <laughs> Putting that out there. Wolverines. <laughs> I haven't really noticed like a big effect in my home county from uh, other than like shortages, you know, and and Walmart has their fucking cattle lane set up and shit like that. No one pays any attention. But, to those. <laughs> yeah, everybody like I go out, you know, for whatever groceries or whatever. And there's like, you know, I see thousands of cars in my tiny little county. Like there's only, let's put this in perspective. There's only like twenty four thousand people in my entire county. <clears throat> so people are just like, "Fuck this! I need shit. I'm going out." Well, yeah, we just Wisconsin just finally got warm enough where it's starting to feel like summer. Like it's in the seventies and it's really nice. Finally, same this here, weekend. Yeah. So when that happened, like yesterday, on my way home from work, I work until two on Saturdays, and on my way home. I encountered so much traffic. It was crazy. Yeah. Like just everywhere. Everybody's out. Everybody's doing things. Yeah, the beaches and parks sheltering are... in place when the weather's shitty. Yeah. But that oh, yeah. first nice day of spring, fuck you. Everybody is outside. <laughs> well, and that was pretty much it. Like me and Lindsay have been laughing about that for a while. Like, you know, realistically, oh, well, you need to try and stay home and don't go out and social. Di- that's winter in Wisconsin. Like every yeah. year. like that's just yeah. what we do. So everyone was like, "Whatever, this doesn't affect me in any." Way. <clears throat> sure, yeah. whatever. I was already planning on staying home and watching Netflix anyway, so right. <laughs> it wasn't really a problem. And then now that it's warm, everyone's like, "Uh, no, I don't want to listen to you." So mm-hmm. I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the it's the complete opposite here. Um, really, is like, it like a ghost town? Uh, during the day, it is. And then at night, there's more activity because it's less enforceable, really. But like, um, like we still have shortages. Like, uh, I was at, I had to go pick up prescription on Thursday night, and there was no TP, and they had a, uh, they had plexiglass up in front of the cashier, and yeah, I mean they've done all that shit here. Um, yeah. but yeah, there there were shortages like on um um. Like the the sodas were shortaged. Uh, there was no TP. Um, the shelves looked like seventy five percent full. Like they hadn't gotten a truck in a long time. Yeah. But then uh, I went to the grocery store, like the actual big grocery store here on Saturday, mm-hmm. and um, like the the ground meats, like gr- ground hamburger. There was like um, like all the, all the higher end ground hamburger, like the 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 eighty five fifteen and up like there was none of that it was all it was all eighty twenty yeah all I could find was like seventy three mm. at the store the other day damn yeah I know good thing it's just going in pasta fagiol and it's gonna be stewing all day <laughs> uh, <coughs> yeah that's why that's why I did that post trying to explain to people from cities how you buy from a farmer how you buy a cow and then get it slaughtered and get around the laws in places like California where you can't legally buy directly from a farmer processed Around meat. here, there's so many people that do that already. And, like, everybody knows about it. So these places are booked out for months for cows. Oh, I'm for, sure. For, like, halves and quarters. Yeah, we so. looked in, yeah, we looked into it um, ordering online and, like, from, like, an online butcher or or something like that like a organic it's it's so expensive so like i was yeah. talking to like you guys know i have friends in in wyoming i was talking to them about them about it a little bit and they're like yeah if you guys need anything just let us know our stores are full 
Yep. And I, I'm like, wait, what? And she's like, yeah. And, and she was telling me about Tyson. Like, they have a full freezer full of elk and bison. And she's like, if you guys need anything, just let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ours is about the same way. Like, we have, we're full, everything. Like, there's some shortages for a little bit, but everything's back to normal now. Yeah. In stores. Well, so we still know. have no paper products at all. Uh-huh. And... Almost no pasta, and that's about it. Everything else is is getting stocked back up. Yeah, we have a, oh, and rice. We're still out of rice. Too. Yeah, we have a, we have a mask, uh, mandatory mask law now. Also, we have to wear a mask out in public. Yeah, the only time Which, I encountered that here was when I went to the NEX for liquor. They forced me to wear a mask. They're doing that the at um, Menards. I don't know if you guys saw when I posted. It. So Menards is like a, a hardware, big hardware. Yeah, but store. that's they're calling the, the cops. They're oh, no. So what? No, they have they have private armed private security at the doors. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have banned anyone under the age of sixteen within the store. And they are requiring, even though it's not a state order that you wear masks, they are requiring that anybody that comes in wears a mask. And if you don't have one, you have to pay a dollar, buy one from them while you're in, or they just won't let you in. Jeez. See, as, as a private, if they're doing that privately on their own, like, I can That's go That's totally elsewhere. their right. Oh, they I have mean, a right to do it, but it's retarded. Yeah. It means I'm never going to buy from them again. And I used to right. spend thousands of dollars a year there, and now I guess I'm going to other hardware stores because fuck you. Right. <laughs> yeah, like ours ours is the law. It's it's a class B misdemeanor to, to not have your mask in public. Like it's it's so retarded. Like, okay, so like you can sit in the vehicle with your window down in the parking lot and you don't have to wear a mask because you're in your vehicle. But uh-huh. if you step outside the door, literally six inches to your left or a foot to your left, if you're not wearing a mask, it's illegal. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's the not, new it's not, borders. It's, it's not inside the vehicle, but outside the vehicle, even though your windows are up and your same air and all that good stuff. Yeah, and then you have to I have to wear it in the you have to wear it into the grocery store, and they got people at the door, and there's signs there's signs on every business in town, um, uh, that by order of the county health department they have to refuse service to anyone not wearing a mask. Yeah. So. There's a lot of places they won't even let you in the door. Yep. It's just, it's ridiculous too, because it's over a, a really bad cold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like the, the number, the numbers. Okay. So Contra Costa County, it's like one point, like 1.41 million or 1.51 million or one, something like that. It's, it's, it's over a million people in my county. We have, we have 28 deaths. According to the county website. Yeah. Our county website says we have four, but yeah, less they were less, all like very elderly people. Less less than a thousand cases. Yeah. And over one million people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lacrosse County doesn't even have one death. Not one. Yeah. <laughs> so we we have some cases, but I, I think we're we're only at like 200 and something cases total. Uh, most of those are presumed cases, not even confirmed cases, and zero deaths in La Crosse County. Now, the neighboring yeah. county, Monroe, they they have had a death, but they've only had one. Yeah. Yeah. But considering it's Monroe County and it's almost all farms, uh, <laughs> right? It's, it's got a population of like 36 people, so it doesn't really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's get to bitching about the government. Yeah. All right. Um, I want to do this one first because I want to set the tone for the show. But um, <laughs> North Carolina tattoo parlor owner arrested after reopening despite the governor's orders. So this is mm. out of a. Uh, um. I don't know. I don't know what city it is, but it's 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 North Carolina, but it's a. Uh, Matthew Jax Myers vowed to open his Apex Tattoo Parlor in defiance of the North Carolina State Home Order, insisting his rights had been trampled and his business ruined. But 10 minutes after he flicked on the red open sign Wednesday afternoon, police led him away in handcuffs, placing him under arrest for violation of an executive order. Myers, 38, said said he knew his act would get him charged, but under Cooper's orders, he is losing so much money that he fears he will lose his house 
and won't be able to feed his three children as soon as June. Yeah. He, he said neither neither he nor any of the small business owners he knows have received any small business loans or federal paycheck protection program money, and he only got approval for insufficient unemployment payments after 13 attempts to sign up. Yeah. Uh, he, says, <coughs> he says, quote, uh, I hope this will inspire other people to do the same. You can arrest one person, but you can't arrest all of those. Um, Myers uh, of Broadway, uh, so Broadway, North Carolina, had been joining reopen NC protest in downtown Raleigh and his Apex Tattoo Factory, which which has both a copy of the Constitution on the front door and a "Don't Tread on Me" flag in the window. He said his business, like all tattoo parlors, is inspected by Wade County health workers and he has gone beyond normal levels of sanitation by limiting who can come inside and disinfecting everyone in half hours. He has several months of backed up work awaiting, he said. Now, this, this, is the big, this is the big part. He says, quote, if people are willing to take the risk, it's their body and their choice. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, Told of the arrest, Wake County Commission Chair Greg Ford said, quote, each of us is responsible for the choice we make, and those choices have consequences. One way or another, we're always held accountable. I wish him well. Um, they literally said the exact same thing. But meant it told- completely differently. I mean, absolutely yeah. the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. He doesn't mean that you're responsible for yourself. He means you're responsible to him yes. for your actions. Yeah, that's what he means when he says responsible. And that's the little fucking yeah. word game. It's uh, you uh, you're, you're you're responsible for your own actions if you break the edicts that we ordered. Right. You're responsible to us. You're accountable to us for your actions. Yeah. That yeah, they don't mean real responsibility. Yeah, what they mean is, like, you'll hear that all the time from them where they're like, you know, somebody gets arrested for something. They're like, well, oh, you know, choices have consequences. You're responsible for your own actions. Like, if that but, were true, there wouldn't be laws trying to change my fucking actions and making yeah. someone else responsible for them. Yeah, it also, makes yeah. no sense. Also, in the same strip mall, a chicken wing place and CBD store uh, were both open uh, under the executive orders. Right, because they're essential. Yeah. Yeah. Ice essential. Essential <laughs> written in the in the SpongeBob font. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm essential. But yeah, like like that that that's what I wanted to get to was these two quotes. Like uh, uh, Jack said, um, uh, if people are willing to take the risk, it's their body and their choice. Mm-hmm. Right. At, like that's something we can all agree with. Yeah, and then yep. the county commissioner literally says the exact same thing. He says, "Each of us is responsible for the choices we make, and those choices doesn't... have consequences." Yeah, he doesn't mean it the way that we fucking. Yeah, but it. he doesn't mean like, oh, well, if you did it, then you know you knew you knew going out that you were taking yeah. this risk, and that's on you if you get sick. What he meant was, well, you knew that you were told by the government to not take these risks by our yes. orders and then you defied them. So there are consequences. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> it's, it's, it's so infuriating. Like they, they said, the, they said the exact same thing. The, the person being arrested and the County commissioner are speaking the same language with totally different meanings. Yep. Yeah. It's, <sighs> But that's that authoritarian doublespeak that they'll pull all the time with stuff. Yeah, yep, Where exactly. they'll be, talk about, like, defending freedom as they're arresting you for deciding to go outside. And right. they'll talk, you know, and, like, freedom and liberty are somehow synonymous with <laughs> tyranny <laughs> and oppression, apparently. Right. Like Sa- they're, safety and control. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it fucking infuriates me i have to just let it go a lot of times when state is say shit like that because trying to get them to see it 
to understand like the massive hypocrisy and irony in these statements from public officials is just, it's swimming through fucking mud trying to get them to see that shit. Yeah, they don't get it. Yeah. It's, it's, it, well, because remember, the state's got 12 years to indoctrinate the living shit out of you in a public school so yeah. that you internalize their doublespeak and believe mm -hmm. it to be just mm -hmm. real. And so right. they get all this propaganda going, and then it, and then they keep going with the propaganda, and then people, because they've internalized it, start repeating it over and over again. And so Thinking that they the thought of it thing. themselves. Yeah. yeah. And it just... Oh my god! And like, <laughs> and he didn't even see anybody. Like, he he flipped on the sign, and within ten minutes he was being arrested. Yeah. Like he didn't even like. Ah. <sighs> like they were they were freaking waiting. I'm watching the video right now, and like, it shows him, and he's sitting there, and he flips, and he flips over the sign, and he turns on the red light, and then like, here comes two cops walking up. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> this is fucking tyranny. Uh -huh. People, how do people yep. not and see this? Like, how is not his, everybody awake yeah. by now? There's his magic paper in the door and his flag behind the window. Yeah. He just looks like a good old boy. Oh. Yeah. Don't worry, Just a guy probably... trying to fucking make a living. Well, yeah, and he's he's probably one of those guys too that's that's thoroughly convinced that the military protects his freedoms. Like I just, yeah, based on the fact that he's got the Constitution and crap, it's like okay, well, but if if they're defending them, what 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 are they doing right now? Because uh, yeah, you don't the, have any freedoms. Yeah, the cops with the PPE on, mask and gloves. Uh, it's just. Yeah, and then you have America is so fucking extra right now. Yeah. <laughs> and they're defending the Gestapo. Like you have people defending these this behavior, and like, oh well, but you're not taking responsibility. No, he he totally was taking responsibility. You're yeah. trying to deny him responsibility. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's uh. like, it's. I'm I'm not gonna go on a big long rant. I'm just I'm not gonna do it. I want to do it, but I'm not gonna do it. But <laughs> like this is this is literally the like these these coronavirus lockdowns, these quarantine orders that police are enforcing. This is our version of prohibition. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. This is our version of prohibition. Now, how are those officers looked at after prohibition that enforced it? Yeah. As fucking red coat Tories and they were ostracized by the public. You know, there's a lot of parallels between what's happening right now mm -hmm. and Jim Crow era laws. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of fucking parallels between this and Jim Crow. Yep. Oh yeah. Where the cops would show, oh, you're, you're at the wrong uh, lunch counter, boy. Yeah, and, you're not allowed yeah. to be here. These people are, but not you. Yeah. I would make a back of the bus comment, but we don't have public buses running anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Can't demand your right to sit in the front of the bus if there are no make buses. A, make a back of the cattle car comment. Yes. <laughs> I have seen I have seen pictures of public buses and they have a line that's like six feet behind the driver and you can't fit in like the first you can't sit like in the first three rows of the bus. <sighs> So, so I, everybody said yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a caste system. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's it's ridiculous too because these same people that will complain that oh you you just don't care about people also want all these services to continue to run. They want all these things to keep happening. They want all these <laughs> workers to go out and somehow don't seem to understand that all of us who are out there working right now we're we're just as exposed as if there was no lockdown. So it doesn't make a freaking difference. Like you're mm -hmm. not, it's not that you care about people. It's that you only care about <laughs> select not, people. Not only that, okay. not only that, but, but Larkin, Larkin did a really great video on this earlier. Uh, it's up on YouTube and he talked about, um, the only way for society to really move on from this virus 
is for people to get the virus, yeah. right? Because because that's how that's how herd herd immunity is created and 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 how. And it's also work. like human psychology. The other yeah. shoe has to fucking drop, or yeah, you will well, remain paralyzed forever. You know that, but like, like the the only way to move on from the virus physically is to get the mm-hmm. virus, right? Right. So all this sheltering in place and lockdowns and quarantines is prolonging the sheltering in place, the lockdowns, and the yep. quarantines. Well, yeah, yeah. Look at Sweden. They didn't. They didn't shut down at all. They just kept going mm-hmm. and just said, "Hey, you guys need to be careful," and then went about their business. And they basically the whole Corona thing has already run its course there, yeah. and it's kind of. And the, de- the, yeah. w- the WHO came out last week and said, "Hey, you know that's how that's how you guys should handle things moving forward." This is what Kevin would call us <laughs> a self licking ice cream cone. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, all right, that's. <laughs> All right, that, I'm, I'm, yep. that, 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 I'm writing that down. That's the name of the episode. Okay. <laughs> Self licking ice cream cone. <laughs> Kevin yeah. has some good ones. Like he always comes up with the weirdest shit to say, like that burlap sack of smashed assholes when I was sick in January. <laughs> All right, I put it on the notes. Self licking ice cream cone. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> I mean, that works. That is appropriate for this. That yeah. is what this yeah. is. Is it's yeah. it's just continuously taking care of itself and perpetuating uh-huh. itself, if you will. But yeah, yeah it's really okay. this is yeah, it's the the whole and you know saying well, we need to save the country by destroying the country. I mean, it's that snake that's trying to eat itself. You know, right. like no, it doesn't work. It's yeah. <laughs> and it, yeah. it, we can even go further than that. You guys read that article I posted the day about uh, is it ethical to have? Is it ethical to order food, and and yeah. during the lockdown and the quarantine? And like the the whole point of that is, is is if if this virus is so scary that you have to shelter in place and lockdown, is it ethical? Um, is it ethical for you? To order food, right? To expect by, someone else to by, assume yeah, that to, risk to, to, for you. Yeah, yep. to expect yeah. someone else to assume the risk for you. Like, I thought it was hilarious, and and showed yeah. a lot of hypocrisy of it. Yeah, um, and a lot of people that didn't get it, but <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought it was hilarious. But anyway, well, yeah, and that's people what have I was no seeing. fucking nuance anymore. Like people just have <laughs> no talent for it. Nuance is that a, is that a new sneaker? <laughs> yeah. The, the new nuance. dad sneaker. Nuance XP. <laughs> Jump higher than LeBron. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, NYPD telling cops to prioritize 311 calls over 911. Snitches over more. stitches. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They care more about, oh, they care more about what the Karens have to say than people who are mm-hmm. actually having an actual emergency. <laughs> Right. Snitches over stitches. That's the new Uh, fucking New York motto. NYPD commanding officers are telling rank and file cops to prioritize 311 social distancing calls over 911 emergency calls, sources said. Despite Mayor Bill de Blasio's frequent urging that they make 911 calls their top concern. Quote, 311 is more of a priority than someone getting robbed at gunpoint, an NYPD source told the Post. Quote, the NYPD is making it mandatory to answer 311 calls within 45 minutes. Otherwise, the commanding officer is going to have to explain himself, the source went on. It's not surprising that they don't see armed robbery as a big deal. I mean, that's literally their fucking job. So, Hashtag to last forfeiture. Three NYPD sources told the Post that they've gotten the directive. Quote, people getting jumped, robbed, assaulted, doesn't matter. My captain <laughs> asked about why a 311 job is almost reaching 45 minutes and not being closed out yet. The first source continued. The NYP- dumbest- yeah. NYPD and the mayor's office vehemently deny the allegations. Quote, of course. these claims are false and dangerous. 
It is a slight to the hardworking men and women of the NYPD to imply that they would respond to 9-11 emergency with anything but the utmost urgency, City Hall spokesman Olivia, whose last name I cannot pronounce, said. Which but is why yeah, because they got to go, they got to go fucking knock out the competition real quick. <laughs> but. But commanding officers are under pressure to get 311 calls answered within 45 minutes to deal with the surging social distancing complaints, making it difficult for officers on the ground to accomplish that while they're also responding to 9-11 emergencies in a timely manner, according to the sources. This is why you just uh, never live in a fucking city. You okay? know what? What that is, though, that tells you is the good news is that if you want to give a snitch some stitches, yeah. <laughs> they're not going to respond. That's on right. mon- yeah, on Monday, a Bronx a Bronx precinct received a call for a possible corvo- uh, coronavirus related death at a home, and it took five off five hours for the officers to respond. Good God! Yeah, if the dead body was a three eleven call, a unit would have responded within forty five minutes. The sources huffed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And then, it, and then the the last two paragraphs say uh, about two weeks ago, Mayor De Blasio uh, exhorted the repub- exhorted the public to report people who aren't social distancing by calling three one one or sending text messages to the system with photos and locations of where the flouting is occurring. That backfired when people began sending <laughs> dick pics and photos. <laughs> <laughs> which we just recommended two weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> which we had recommended. I, 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 love, I love that they keep bringing that up. Yeah. That everyone's <laughs> response was to just troll it into non-existence. Yeah. <laughs> Liter- literally crash the system. More effective than voting. Hashtag things that are more effective than voting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. But that's I, what this is, though. The reason that they're doing this is because it's about setting up that control. Because yeah. now all of your neighbors, it's the same thing the Soviet Union did with the secret police and, and yeah, people, well, you know, denouncing each other. And at this point now, they're conditioning everybody that, oh, well, I if I am snitch on somebody, the cops are actually going to respond to this. Yeah, so. Right. This way, it encourages once this stuff is over. So, if you have a real emergency, if you have a real emergency, what you need to do is call 311 and fucking say that there's somebody not social distancing in your apartment. And then (laughs) they'll actually show up. This guy's robbing me. And so he's within six feet of me. So he's not social distancing. I need to. That's right. That's right. Use 311. And he doesn't have a mask on either. (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah, there's, there's the, there's the, the comparison here to 1984 where they talked about like the government doesn't want to force you to obey. The government wants to make you want to obey. Right. Right. And that's, that's what it is with, with these, these three, this uh, three on one, this, this, the social distancing, the, the, the social ostracization and social organizing and this herd herd mentality that that's going on lately is the peer pressure that exists Mm-hmm. is seriously dividing people right now. Yep. Like you're, you're you're in camp A or you're in camp B. Period. Yeah. You know, like before there was there was a lot of it, but coming out of this which yep. probably actually won't happen till like August. <laughs> it's going to be there's going to be a lot of shit handled in the street. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, and there's I'm, ho- I'm hoping at least yeah, yeah it's the the 1984 is and I, I wrote a paper about it a while back um, I think actually in high school I wrote a paper about it um, comparing it to the panopticon that that's it's the idea of the panopticon so the the panopticon was a a prison the design that was come up with in the 19th century where before cameras existed um, right. where you would put the you would make the entire prison a big circle with all of the mm-hmm. cells facing inward. Mm-hmm. And you had one way glass all the way around um, on that side uh, on the, the guard tower that was in the center so that none of the prisoners could see if you were looking at them, if you were the guard or not, which right. meant that they would just automatically assume you were always looking at them. And right. then you, it made the prison population much more controllable because they would self police at that point. You didn't right. actually control need- through paranoia. I mean, it's a time tested fucking tactic. So. Yep. And that's exactly what this is all over again. This is another version of the Panopticon where, well, everyone's going to self-police because they're worried that somebody's watching them. 
and is going mm-hmm. to call them in and snitch on them. It's the it, again, same thing. Same thing that happened in the Soviet Union. Same thing that happened in Nazi Germany. The exact same thing that happens in Cuba to this Venezuela day. Venezuela now. Same thing. Yeah, it's yeah. where you got to worry about. It's not even government cameras. It's your neighbors. North Korea, big fucking time. Oh yeah. yeah. North Korea has TV shows about shaming people for not having approved haircuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen their approved haircuts. I wouldn't have one either. Yeah, yeah no shit. Um. <sighs> All right, what's next, Jason? Hold on. There's There was a term I had to look up. It's, um... Uh, what is the term? It's... Pandemic vigilantism is is essentially what it is, um, yeah. and that's that's a big thing that's being pushed about people taking care of their communities by mm-hmm. report by reporting social distance violators and all this other stuff, and they're tr- they're trying to make them into freaking superheroes is what it is. <sighs> well, yeah, and it's ridiculous because it's it's this whole idea these people have that that do this that do the reporting it's this idea that somehow that makes them important that makes yeah. them somehow something well, this that is matters giving people now. who've never felt big before a chance to feel power it's it's big power and powerful yeah yep yeah they want the the best seat on the box car yeah like and i <laughs> That's what it is, though. It's the same. I mean, it's it's always like that with the cop worshippers, where they're just like, "Oh, well, I got your six. Herder, herder. What are you hoping that you get the window seat on the box car? What yeah. do you think your reward's gonna be for this, jackass? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is come to boog. I can tell you what your reward's gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag double tap. All right. Let's all right. Let's calm down. Okay. <laughs> all right. Article. This this article is from Reason. Um. <laughs> People stuck at home are making and watching porn. Everybody panic. <laughs> and, and then the, the subtitle says, anti-porn crusaders get their panties in a twist about the uptick in porn consumption during COVID-19. Like, who oh. even fucking, what kind of mind cares so much about what fucking strangers <laughs> are doing that has zero fucking impact on You'll see stuff. tons hey, of hey. that in the alt-right. Pan- pandemic patty says if you can't have if she can't have fun nobody can have fun yeah, i don't even exactly. think it's about that i think this is like puritanism and like yeah. fucking well you see that you see that out of the alt right all the time where they do yeah, that too the, uh, where they tr- try to really yeah, yeah where yeah, they they really push super hard this like traditional nuclear family thing which okay fine like if you're like hey you know what that's what's best is a traditional nuclear family fine but then yeah. they will freak out on people who watch porn or go to strip clubs or um, aren't, you know, aren't monogamous, things like that. Mm-hmm. Like they freak out at them and get so obsessed with this idea right. that somebody's doing something counter to their personal values. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Jesus. All right. Okay. Crazy. Uh, to the article. Uh, there's some evidence that Americans are buying more junk food, drinking more alcohol, playing more video games, consuming more marijuana, and watching more porn while stuck at home during the COVID-19 shutdown. What What did you you fucking (laughs) expect? What did you think was going to happen? What else are people going to do when they're stuck at home all day, man? (laughs) All right. right. The, The possibility that more people are possibly watching more porn has modern culture warriors doubling down on their calls for censoring adult entertainment. Oh, for <laughs> not oh, only not only is the ban porn brigade up to or up to its usual business, but activists have started incorporating the new coronavirus into their anti-sex work campaigns. The latest kicked off in March when the website Pornhub announced that it would offer free premium subscriptions to people in Italy, Spain, and France. A spokesman for the group formerly known as Morality and Media, now rebranded. <laughs> Now re- rebranded as the National Center on Sexual Exploitation, called oh, it a God. called <laughs> it a quote demonic deal. <laughs> uh, if that isn't the most euphemistically named thing I yeah. have ever yeah. heard of, 
A subsequent Pornhub traffic spike further upset moralists. Family Research Council Vice President for Policy and Public Affairs, Travis Weber, complained that, quote, these pornography sites try to lure people and trap them into viewing the stuff while they're sitting around. What? Uh, like no, they're, there's no fucking trap. Super okay. subtly, like, <laughs> oh, learn how to pass the time with this one simple trick. And then, bam, <laughs> porn in your yeah, face, right. your right. virgin eyes. Hardcore. <laughs> Sioux, Sioux City Journal columnist Linda Mahalob warned in early April, quote, as the country face or the country focuses on COVID nineteen, there is another public health crisis that continues under the radar and is just as infectious and damaging to individuals, family, and our children. Didn't didn't the Surgeon General like recommend like <sighs> just getting yourself off rather than going and hooking up with somebody because of like social he distancing literally, and he, stuff? He literally uh, they literally said both. Uh, the, the Surgeon General, like the, the New York Health Department and the Oregon Health Department, they both said jerk off and don't eat ass. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and yeah. you and know now... what? Like, there's another, there's another aspect to this. Um, more people making porn. Well, there's 30 million new unemployed people in this fucking country. Yeah. And that is an easy way to make some money from home. People have fucking bills to pay. Like, what do you, do you expect to happen? Yeah. I still gotta Everybody make knows that sex sells. It is the one thing that is always sold better than anything else on the fucking planet, always and forever. Would you, sex would you, fucking sells. Would you call it the new gag economy? Yeah, oh, I think <laughs> you should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Oh. The. <laughs> the giggity economy. Giggity, the giggity giggity economy. economy. Yeah. She's just trying to get a leg up, that's all. <laughs> all <right>. Both <laughs> of them, actually. <laughs> Everyone appreciates flexibility. Yeah. Yep. If, they aren't, if, if they aren't touching her ears, she, you don't deserve her ear. All right. <laughs> the, the poor... The poor <laughs> the porn hub bub was premature. Big spikes in traffic tumbled once Pornhub's free subscription promo- promotion ended. It fell further as stay-at-home and shutdown orders wore on, suggesting the surge represented an influx of temporary new customers. Pornhub skyrocketing uh, March traffic became, by mid-April, a much, much more modest bump. Alas, ours is the era of easily triggered scolds and illiberal nannies who see damning, <laughs> damning decadence in anything that they don't personally like or understand. Not to mention anti-porn awareness groups like the NCOSE on the right and Exodus Cry on the left still have to earn their keep. You know, so it's funny. ironic that they're the ones crying the loudest about porn when they're the ones with the biggest sticks in their asses. Yeah. I think it's interesting that if anything seems to be agreed upon by the political right and political left, it's that apparently they absolutely need to make sure no one has any fun ever. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one thing yeah. that they can unite on is like, what, there are people enjoying themselves? Absolutely not. Not in my America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Here, now we're gonna get to the good stuff. Also, well, that's why you said. used fast forward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Pornhub's marketing stunt and traffic spike provided a convenient new hook, but anti-porn advocates are quite capable of whipping themselves into a fever without help. <laughs> One might think the fact that the porn studio production in the U.S. and Canada have been suspended until further notice would be some comfort. But thanks to social media, cash apps, cam sites, clips, clip stores, and quote fan club platforms, experienced porn, per, experienced porn performers, sex workers from other sectors who are now out of work and cash strapped or stuck at home, newcomers who have been producing and monetizing their own content online, and Hell this yeah. has anti nudity nuts up in arms. Hey, I mean, both you and your husband are laid off right now. There's no money coming in. You're bored, so you're going to have lots of sex anyways because that's what people do when they're fucking bored. Why not set up a camera and make a little fucking money while you're doing it? Laid off? Why not get laid on? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> hey, my, my, you might find a new kink. All right, uh, one platform only fans has recently been getting more mainstream <coughs> attention, and with that, a healthy dose of criticism. 
Quote, every now and then, the modern world produces a trend so ghastly you can't help but sit back and think, would a global Islamic caliphate really be that bad? One what? such fad and the sudden growth of OnlyFans, a monthly paid subscription content service, says Charlie Peters uh, this week in the American Conservative. Uh. What? Yes, let me let me read that again. This is this is Charlie Peters. He wrote it this week in the American Conservative. He says, "Quote: Every now and then, the modern world produces a trend so ghastly, you can't help but sit back and think: Would a global Islamic caliphate really be that bad?" So this is more so like people getting their rocks off and making some money to pay their fucking bills is so ghastly. That it's more ghastly than beheadings in the street and stringing up gay people from cranes and stoning women to death for being raped and shit like that. Yep, that's less ghastly than people getting off and making some money doing. Yeah, he would he would rather see a woman be horrifically murdered or attacked with acid Uh because she showed a little leg than than have to acknowledge and deal with the fact that. Sometimes people want to watch other people getting off. Yeah. <laughs> it's sexy. It gets you in the mood, right? Yep. <laughs> well, you can pretty much guarantee that that dude, if you're a woman, you can guarantee that that dude will not do the things that you like. No. <laughs> He's not going to do that thing with his tongue and his thumb at the same time that you like. Yeah, he's not going to do that. Oh, he's not going to do oral at all. Like, those are the dudes yeah. who will not do oral at all whatsoever. Yeah. You know that that's the case. You also know that he's probably, like, <laughs> going to last 16 seconds, three pumps, and he's done, and it's going to be missionary, and he's going to get mad at you if you say yeah. that you didn't get off. Like, yeah. That's he's, that kind of dude right there. He's going to complain that the that the mayonnaise on his sandwich is spicy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Get you a man that apologizes that he only got you off three times before he got off. If she doesn't get off three times before you stick it in, you're behind the curb. All right. (laughs) Platforms like platforms like OnlyFans, uh, which gives sex workers more control over their own boundaries, clientele, and earnings than porn uh, than the porn world traditionally offered, appear to especially trigger the conservative anti-porn activists who have long insisted that their biggest concern is stopping sexual exploitation, not controlling what women can do with their bodies. And yet yeah, right. they're freaking out about people <laughs> making porn of themselves at home. Which is obviously not fucking exploitative <laughs> at all. Yeah, if yeah, anything, they're, they're kind it. of exploiting their customers who are paying for it. Yeah. So. It's, well, yeah. yeah. And you'll, see, you'll see that all the time where... where women who are in the industry will straight up say that. Like if anybody's getting exploited, it's the idiots who are paying me hundreds of dollars a month what that, out of what their that, pockets to like, look that, at me naked. That <laughs> one, that one girl made like, what was it? Like 80 grand or something like that off her fucking bath water. Yeah. 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 Talk about like, exploitation. That's exploiting <laughs> the neckbeards. Hardcore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this mis- this misplaced ire is especially pernicious right now with so many sex workers put out of work by the new coronavirus. Financial desperation can force sex workers and other vulnerable groups into riskier arrangements and make it more likely that they'll be victimized. Platforms like OnlyFans, meanwhile, can actually help protect the young female population. Yes, they can. Peter- Peter's worries about by following by allowing consenting adults to engage in remote sex work from their homes and on their own terms. Yeah, and it Which complies with social distancing, uh-huh. and yep. it's not hurting fucking anyone. Yeah, no one's no one is actually being hurt by this at all. Oh, hold on, yeah. hold on. It's actually There's... a much better version of what but was the there mor- before. Yeah, but the morality oh. police. Yeah. I agree. Hold on. There's there's a take on that. Hold on. All right. Uh, it's not just conservatives twisting the anti-exploitation logic to fit their pet agenda. Anti-porn advocates on the left have also been using COVID-19 to scare up sympathy. In Australia, some are trying to blame <coughs> porn for purported spikes in domestic violence. Something they say, something they concluded is happening based on there being more online searches for the phrase for the phrase recently 
actual shelters and services for victims of domestic violence have been reporting an increased demand for their services during the COVID-19 outbreak, but they attribute this to increased demand to abusers being forced to stay home and the stress of unemployment triggering uh, abusive behavior, not otherwise non-toxic partners being radicalized by an extra 15 minutes of Pornhub. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I watched that bondage video. Now I'm going to go beat the living shit out of my wife. Like that—that that is not a thing that happens. Yeah, That's- yeah. yeah. Uh, both the literal, both the liberal and conservatives iterations of the new porn freakout focus on pornography instead of addressing actual threats to vulnerable groups such as sex work, uh, such sex workers, and those in abusive relationships, uh, which are much more related to material resources than symbiotic. Uh, patriarchy or sex traffickers focusing on porn in other words let's anti-porn crusaders cosplay for ethical positions while ignoring the actual contours of people's suffering and uh endeavoring to do anything about it yeah that's that's exactly it's the same thing like with trudeau in canada going after the legal gun owners instead of trying to go after the hard target, (laughs) the actual criminals. It's going after a soft target. It's going after something that you can just easily do and go, see, I'm doing something. Because they're fucking predators. Predators do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. They go after the young and the vulnerable in the herd. They go after the soft targets because the energy expenditure to go after the hard targets is too great. It's, it's, it's the same police going after pot smokers rather than going after rapists and murderers. Yep. Right. It's, it's easier on them to bust a couple of stoners, you know, pull over, pull over a car, search the car, find some pot. than it is to be like, Oh, look at all this evidence and test rape kits and do all look at all these. Yeah. Thousands of untested rape kits. So, yeah. Um, but I'm a, I'm a big fan. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. like if, if if we're if like if the whole my body my choice thing actually exists, uh-huh. it's like let them do it. They're not hurting yeah. anybody. No, it only counts when they do want to hurt somebody. Yeah, then it's and their if, body, if, their choice. And, if, and of yeah. course, the picture that Reason uses is a total neckbeard, neckbeard looking guy. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, that Reason. Dude looks like he'd be an anti-porn activist. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like the type who would fucking apologize for having a penis. Yeah. The so. dude who wears the who wears the rainbow colored male feminist shirt and thinks yeah. that makes him a superhero and therefore yeah. but he's a really nice guy, so women should just have sex with him. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. So yes. The... Get over yourselves, fucking moralist. Yeah. yeah. So. Let, let right. people enjoy it. Th- like, that's all I can think of is that. Shh, shh, shh. Let people enjoy things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, if it's not affecting you, it's not your fucking business. As yeah. long as nobody's being hurt, it is not your fucking business at all. I mean, those people couldn't satisfy half the people in those videos anyway. No. Couldn't even come close. And nor could they actually make any of their own homemade porn that anybody actually wanted. And you know what? <laughs> I'm Well, Instagram I, Instagram allows 60 second videos, right? I think that, that <laughs> I think homemade porn is better for people than like, you know, mass produced hardcore because yeah. it's people who care about each other and they're just having it's, fun, and it's, it's more—it's you know, more realistic. Yeah, it's way more realistic, and it's less likely to, you know, produce like body dysmorphia and people who watch it and things like that, or performance issues and stuff, because it's just real people having fun and getting their rocks off. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, more power to you. You want to? You really want to let us all listen to your macro making macaroni noises? You can go oh, yeah. right ahead. More power to you. <laughs> Fight power. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it right now. Like a homemade porn is better in a lot of cases than homemade rap. Yeah. Usually right? yes. Calm, calm yeah. down, SoundCloud rappers. Like homemade porn know. doesn't really take much talent. It just takes a fucking camera. <laughs> <laughs> fucking and a camera, actually. Bad, <laughs> a- bad angle. Bad angle. <laughs> it's, 
Yeah, you yeah. really want realistic homemade porn. Then, like, somebody's got to be like, oh, crap, I need to pee partway through. And, like, they get a leg <laughs> cramp. We need to change positions. And Yeah. <laughs> We're not doing it on my side because the wet spot was on my side last time. It's your yeah. fucking turn. And the whole time, one of the dogs is peering over you. <laughs> peering over you from the bed, just staring. A kid's pounding on the fucking door. <laughs> I can't find my Nintendo Switch. <laughs> See, that would be realistic. You hear, the, you, hear the, you hear the neighbor's stereo in the background? Yeah. yeah. The fucking mariachi music from across my street. Yeah. yeah. See, no one watches that because we don't want, like, I, if I'm watching that, I don't want a real experience to get to watch. <laughs> the whole point is supposed to be that it's not a real experience. That yeah. it's a fantasized one. You know, the idealized version of it. Like, well, nobody... speak for yourself. Some of us just like to see other people do it. <laughs> Doesn't have to be fucking fantasy shit. Uh I can remember once. But I can do that in real life. I don't need pork. <laughs> <laughs> the plumber walks in. Those are, that, those are a lot of leashes hanging on your wall. Yeah, how many I dogs do you? How I many dogs that. do you have? Uh, yeah. All right. How many do you want me to have, bitch? <laughs> yeah, I right. tell you what, I was going to become a pizza delivery guy, and then I found it's nothing like the videos I've been watching. So. <laughs> All right, federal judge allows Houston Strip Club to open as a restaurant. Yes. Nice. This is this is from um uh the first. It says uh, uh Houston, Texas. Uh, a federal judge approved a temporary restraining order against the city of Houston, which means a strip club can stay open as a restaurant. Club yeah. Onyx filed the suit today after being shut down last night, just hours after they opened under Governor Abbott's phase one plan. Mayor Turner, that's the the Houston mayor, uh, issued a statement saying, quote, I am asking the state to quickly clarify whether the governor <laughs> intended for sexual oriented businesses like Onyx to be part of the businesses authorized to open on May 1st. And if not, I am asking the st asking the state via the Texas attorney general to enforce the state's order because the city cannot afford to expand its limited resources, i.e. fire and police to defend the state's order that a federal judge is now questioning. Shh, let people enjoy things. God yeah, what, damn. Uh, well, yeah. and what kind of word sell is, so he's basically saying, well, it's not really worth it to enforce, but you guys should enforce it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Club Onyx opened its doors at midnight Thursday, which is technically Friday morning as a restaurant with entertainment but was later told to close by the HPD. That's the Houston Police Department. The club president, Eric Langan, filed a lawsuit against the city of Houston in federal court after threats to press charges were made by the district attorney. The Houston the Police Department spent hours trying to figure out what to do with the club on Friday morning. Langdon admits it's a club, but he also serves food and decided at midnight he would operate as a business that also had entertainers. Ah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. However, the business had to close hour, a few hours later, and Langdon isn't happy with the outcome. Quote, I guess the DA decided they would take the charges and or they would take charges and press charges against me if I wouldn't close tonight. And since we are so close to closing time, we're going to go ahead and pick, every, pick, pick up everybody's food to go. Uh, the state, the state stayed home order expired on Thursday, allowing restaurants to operate with a 25% capacity starting today, today being Friday. Uh, Club Onyx was following that guidance, limiting the number of customers and entertainers, uh, or sorry, Club Onyx was following the guidance, limiting the number of customers and entertainers all had on masks. But HPD officers were not certain the club fit the description of a restaurant, so the district attorney got involved. There's some Quote, people with a really weird kink <laughs> who are very excited right now. Yeah. <laughs> Quote, quote, we're not allowing any lap dancing and they have masks on, Langdon said, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, quote, we're not going to look into it and do our investigation. It uh, gives us a, or sorry, quote, we're going to look into it and give our, and do our investigation. It gives us a chance to look at the license and make an informed decision as to where we go from here. That is HPD uh, Assistant Chief James Jones. You just leave him the hell alone. 
Yeah. Um, once the decision was made to issue a misdemeanor charge for opening, the club closed. Uh, the club does not have licenses and perm- or the club does have licensing and permits, but that includes operating as a sexually oriented business. Langdon said, "Other stores that serve food are open, so why not his?" Quote, I just find it funny that they'll arrest a tax-paying, law-abiding citizen for a Class B misdemeanor uh, is what they said they would charge me with. But they won't press charges against people breaking into cars right now. I mean, what has the city come to? I mean, I live in Houston, Texas. I didn't know I moved to San Francisco, California, and I don't like <laughs> it. So if I have to go to jail to prove my point, I guess I'll prepare for that tomorrow. <laughs> He got yeah. that little dig in against San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did. Nice. That's so, yeah, but I mean, he raises a good point. Like, I serve food. Like, I'm a restaurant. Yeah. That's Absolutely. I like this be whole able to fucking. Open if there other restaurants are. This whole country right now is that fucking meme from South Park. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was America. Yeah. When we keep seeing that almost word for word get said in all these yeah. videos with these business well, owners and people are getting read, like I'm, I'm sorry, I was under the impression I was in America. So, yeah. and, and 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 according to the um, uh, um, restraining order issued by the judge, the city of Houston cannot come within three feet of Club Onyx. Nice. <laughs> 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 what I want to know is how quickly he, how he got in front of a judge so fucking quickly. I mean, like that's that's kind of astounding. <laughs> Are they prioritizing these fucking these cases right now? Are the courts prioritizing? Well, they when, might. When, when you when you have a business like this where people like to hang out, I'm sure the judge knows a few of the dancers. Just. Just, probably, yeah, yeah, probably. But on top of that, I think they are probably like courts are prioritizing a lot of those lawsuits because they're otherwise you're going to have to like hear them after the shutdown ends completely when it's become completely superfluous. And then you're arguing from, well, here's what it did. And it yeah. becomes an irrelevant thing for the court to have to hear. But it is relevant now and it's possibly going to change policy. So you have to hear it now when it's timely. Yeah, I guess. Plus, he's probably also a fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's an yeah. upstanding tax paid member of the community. Yeah. And he serves food with entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Food and right. Food. I mean, like, like the, the, those clubs, like with with the go go dancers and whatnot. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. How is how mm-hmm. is that? I mean, at that point, they're not allowing lap dances. It's kind of just like a very extreme version of uh, Twin Peaks or Kil- Tilted Kilt. Yeah. Like it's that's all it is. It's just a slightly yeah. more extreme version of that. Otherwise, it's the exact same thing. It's food, <laughs> and then also mm-hmm. nudity. Yeah. <laughs> shirtless, shirtless, it's not that different than Hooters, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's still just better I mean, it's because just Hooters looking. sucks. Yeah. Well. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, so yeah. He should have been allowed to be open in the first place. But Yep. Well yeah, if you're if you know that there's this virus going around and blah 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 and you're like, I still kinda want a chick covered in glitter to rub her booty on me. Like yeah, at shake that her point, tits in my face. Yeah, at that point you are taking full responsibility. You know that you could <laughs> potentially wind up with the virus out of this, but you go anyway. Yeah, it's it's the exact same thing as people going to strip clubs that are like down by airports and underneath overpasses. Like you know that you're probably going to get something, but you go anyway. You're really <laughs> aware what maybe you're the, going into. Maybe maybe the club needs an OnlyFans account. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, virtual lap dances. Just hold there the phone go. just right, and it's just like you're there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But without the pink eye. All right. Yeah. Um. <laughs> what we really need is everybody needs a sex robot, and then a sex worker can control it remotely. And it's like having sex with the prostitute, but nobody has to come in contact with each other. It's very, you know. Yeah. See. You know. So that's a little demolition man e, but. I know. I was just thinking. <laughs> that, yeah, that's that's a little that's worse than the seashells. Put on the helmet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 
I can just I can just hear it over over the like mic. I didn't mean to put that there. The robot got hacked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just some guy whimpering in the corner. <laughs> oh, can you imagine you get stuck in a, in like the same loop? It's chafing. It's Jeez. chafing. Make it stop. Help. <laughs> it's raw. <laughs> <laughs> The spanking machine won't turn off. All right. <laughs> <sighs> We're going to get... We need, we need an OnlyFans account. We, we do. do. This fucking show oh. needs an OnlyFans account. All right. <laughs> you have one subscriber. One. Congratulations. <laughs> you're in the bottom 99th percentile of earners. <laughs> yeah. All right. Speaking of not my fetish... Uh, police take guns from San Diego man claiming virus is a government conspiracy. Uh, police say they took unregistered shotguns from a man <laughs> who made, quote, bizarre and threatening social media posts about corona- coronavirus conspiracies, threatening to, quote, take things into his own hands. That. Yeah. Yeah. I love that they always just assume that must be mean something violent because that's all they un- all they would ever do is violence. So yeah. they just assume that's what you mean, not, oh, I'm going to go out and investigate myself and I'm going to, you know, yeah. play investigative yes. reporter. If I say I'm going to take things into my own hands, that means that I'm working on not needing any fucking thing from any of them. And I'm just like cutting myself off from fucking society yeah. uh, <laughs> the man told police he believed COVID-19 was a quote elaborate hoax to allow tracking of Americans through 5G cell towers and warned family and friends he was, <laughs> he was arming himself during the pandemic according to a press release from the San Diego San Diego City Attorney's Office okay I mean it's a little nutty but if I'm gonna be honest <laughs> that's like 10% of my fucking news feed on Facebook I know the oh, that's the exact same shit. Yeah. I don't right. understand how radio waves work ah yeah, that's... <laughs> my favorite yeah, guess... it's, I mean what he said is not fucking uncommon <laughs> right now <laughs> Did you, did you guys see the uh, the flat Earth 5G conspiracy meme? meme? Oh God, right? that was so good. <laughs> and it says like oh. uh, like uh, they said, uh, why are flat Earthers more affected or believe that 5G something something something? Right? And it's like more affected it shows, by 5G. Right? Yeah. It shows it shows a 5G tower sitting on top of a curved Earth, and then the people were at the side, like well below the 5G line. Yeah, but like it the, only but... goes in one straight line out. From <laughs> the side. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, and then it shows. It was the flat Earth and like the way the the, the waves coming from the five G are like going, going through right, the flat Earthers' right, heads and, because they're in yeah. the light of fire. <laughs> so, all right. Oh, that meme was gold. Quote, <laughs> quote: Multiple calls were made to the San Diego Police Department regarding the respondents' con- conduct. The city said, including about a trip to buy ammunition where the 52-year-old was denied because of a prior criminal conviction. When he wasn't when he wasn't allowed to buy the ammo, the man quote reportedly was in, was enraged by what he believed was a government plan orchestrated by people who were targeting him. Oh, he's the most targeted individual. To, I mean, the dude was nuts. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. uh, at that yeah. point, at that point, investigators say the man or say the man said quote I guess I'm going to have to take things into my own hands. <sighs> I draw that line, though, when he says that as a, well, I'm going to have to find black market methods for things. Yeah. yeah. That's what I hear. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. I mean, San Diego, Arizona's right there. All right. Uh, police and mental health professionals were sent to the man's house where he, quote, appeared to exhibit psychotic and delusional behavior and was de- determined to be a danger to others, officials said. Among the man's claims... Police say he told them he needed to arm himself against Microsoft founder Bill Gates. <laughs> I mean, again, he was unhinged, but uh, he's not. He's not wrong. Like, I mean, yeah, I'm not saying that Bill Gates, you know, was a good guy or anything, because he's obviously not. Yeah, he's a fucking was- eugenicist, but 
But <laughs> like, if, if he's not going to personally, personally harm <laughs> yourself against him. Uh, the man like, was ten- it's a little fucking. I just, I'm just imagining him showing up on this dude's door, house and like knocking on the door and being like, uh, hi. Um, so <laughs> I heard what you've been saying about me. And <laughs> Bill I'm Gates, pretty Bill. sure all of us could fucking take Bill Gates if he yeah, showed up at I, our I, house. My 11 year old daughter guns. could probably take out Bill Gates. This is the part that, that starts to anger me. All right. Oh, well, I mean, the guy's psycho, but like, okay. Yeah. The man was taken into custody and placed on a 72 hour psychiatric hold, right? So he wasn't arrested. He was thrown into. He's on, pro- he's on probation for a drunk driving conviction and was not allowed to own guns until 2025, according to the police. For drunk driving? For drunk driving, yes. What? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that, that's totally connected. What? Yeah. <laughs> the city attorney's office was able to seize the man's unregistered weapons and say they will prevent him from obtaining others through San Diego's gun violence restraining or restraining order program. That's the yeah, cuz that really worked with the guns that he bought initially, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> stress from the COVID, or quote stress from the COVID-19 public health crisis ex- exacerbating anxiety and mental health struggles for many. City attorney Maria Elliott said, quote, "Thanks to public vigilantism or sorry, thanks to public vigilance Vigil, vigil. I can't talk. Vigilance. vigilance. I I know the word. I just can't. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Quote. Thanks to public vigilance, people were able to safely intervene and remove firearms from someone who presents a danger to himself and others before he resorted to violence. Oh, for God's! There's no evidence that he was going to resort to violence. He just was, you know, probably going to resort to. Wearing strange things on his head and this is like minority report in... shit. It's the yeah. division of fucking pre crime. Yeah. yeah, like he he hadn't posed any threat to anybody. He didn't threaten anybody. He just said, "Well, it looks like you know, since they won't sell me ammunition, I'm gonna have to figure out my own way to to get yeah, it." Like, and, and let's let's not let's not forget the fact that but like he literally said it was a government conspiracy, and then the government throws him into a psych ward and takes his guns. Yeah. Yeah. Thereby verifying yeah. that they are in fact out to get him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the government is the government is targeting me. No, we weren't, but we are now. Yeah. Um, Got to yeah. protect myself from Bill Gates. Well, the, yeah, it's like. A, <laughs> it's like um um. <laughs> what's what's the, this? What's the, the the meme the meme where it looks straight and then like it says something and then looks to the side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> gotta gotta protect him from Bill Gates. I've got to protect yeah. myself from Bill Gates. <laughs> Bill Gates yeah. is going. Bill oh, Gates crap. Is Cancel going. that trip, guys. Cancel that yeah. trip. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He's on to me. Yeah, and, <laughs> and see me coming. And on on probation for drunk driving. I. It's just. Uh, you had they. So I mean, ignoring the fact that registration of firearms is a blatant violation. So of, is yes. the having to go right. through a Nick's check to buy yeah. ammunition. Yeah, that's yeah. also, and that one's actually. I thought I thought that was shut down by a federal judge too. So uh, yeah, and then the next day the state appealed and he issued a, uh, a stay on it. So oh, uh, same same as the same <coughs> as the magazine the the magazine thing a couple months ago. It just a few more days. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't able to purchase any. Yeah, not to mention that all of these laws are an infringement of something that shall not be infringed. Yeah, shall not be infringed. But what does that mean? Like, it it's literally so fucking means shall not be infringed. <laughs> shall oh not God. be infringed. Yeah, but it's ignoring all of that. The yeah. fact that they decided to take his gun rights, his right to defend himself away because he got caught driving a vehicle or over an arbitrarily declared limit of blood alcohol. Yeah. What? Well, seriously? Like, yeah. what, how is that connected yeah. in any way? How is it's that not. connected? That's like, Oh, you, uh, you have overdue parking tickets. So we're going to assume that you're dangerous and take your guns away. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's exactly the sort of thing I've come to expect out of California. A lot of San Diego's 
bizarre. That whole Southern California is just a, it's yeah. a different world. I mean, they yeah. would do that here, but Southern California is a different world. It um, is. I wasn't there for long. I was there for a sea school in San Diego for a couple of weeks, but yeah, it's <laughs> it's a different culture. <laughs> is it all the sunshine? Is it just it it messes with people's brains and they can't think anymore? Is that what happens? Like, <laughs> it's it's the dehydration. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, and it, everybody it, knows that every chemical on the planet only causes cancer in California. In California, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pro- Prop 65, I get that I get that Prop 65 warning on everything. Yeah. Oh, I, I love laughing about that. I, I laughed the other day because I was looking at that, um, the uh, Kalashnikov USA, the the nine mil, their 9 millimeter pistol AK that they have, um, which is freaking phenomenal, by the way. Uh, when I was looking at that, it says on there, um, the Prop 65 warning was like, this may cause exposure, you may expose you to lead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, that's literally its point. It's a gun. I, it's to expose people to, to lead. Expose people to lead. No, and today I, I was on Amazon <laughs> buying a um a game cart, right? Um, you got you know what a game cart is. It's yeah, you know, for where all, you for haul haul deer and stuff, yeah. Yeah, but you can I mean it's super useful around the property too, hauling wood around and stuff like that, right? And at the bottom of the listing on Amazon it has this contains whatever this fucking molecule or chemical is, which is known in the, st- in the known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects. It's always in the state it's of Cal- only okay, California. <laughs> as long I as I don't sh- go to California. Yeah, I am shocked I'm still alive. Yeah, yeah. I, you'd just be one giant tumor by now, I would think. <laughs> yeah. have, you, have, you see, have you seen this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I might be. So... Um, yeah. And in California, it's perfectly legal to knowingly expose another human being to HIV or AIDS, but it's illegal to not wear fucking mask in public, even and if you're not sick. That that's a county thing, not a state thing. But yeah. Oh yeah. It's just yeah. Uh, there's no logic to this stuff, and people still put their faith in the people who come up with this shit. Cal- like, I know. In, in in San Francisco, like you can shit on the sidewalk and leave your needle in the gutter, and it's uh-huh. illegal. But as long as you're wearing a mask while you're doing it, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. i um, see. I'm not exposing you to anything hazardous because I'm wearing a mask as I take a shit on a sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, is it like public it, nudity yeah. legal? But as long as you have like shoes on or something like that in San Francisco. Um. It, public nudity in San Francisco used to be illegal, and now I think it is—it's a citation. I don't think it's like an actual oh. school offense. Oh, um, there's it's some like, parts of the city that won't enforce that, though. Yeah, it's, it's like an ordinance violation thing it's, now, it's, and it's bad. <laughs> there's some parts of this you just don't want to go to. And somehow the people who run that area, including <laughs> illustrious Nancy Pelosi fucking think that this all makes sense somehow like this and, makes sense in their brains all right, all right, okay so, so we're on san francisco in san francisco in san francisco it is a felony to possess hollow point ammunition what yes so if you're gonna shoot someone you need to make sure that you over penetrate and definitely hit the child standing behind them right yes yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I never understand why they do that. Banning silencers, banning fucking hollow points. You're banning the things that literally make guns safer to operate. Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. I laughed hysterically when <coughs> um, I was talking to some old FUD who remembered the like the black tail and ammo and how that was banned. I was like, you do understand that was just a hollow point, right? Right. He's like, no, no, it was. I'm like, no, seriously, look at it. It's a, they actually still make it. They just changed the name. Yes. Yeah. Just a hollow point. It's all yeah. it is. That's... And <laughs> I keep hollow points in my nine millimeter. I'm not, you know, that's what I keep in there for. Yeah. Regular it's a, carry. It's, it's, it's what everyone should carry. See, yeah. I have I have Hornady critical defense, so it's not technically a hollow point. There's a little polymer thing in there. So see, um, it's not a hollow point. It's filled. Those <laughs> gotcha. make those make. 
those make pretty flowers. Yes, they do. Well, so. <laughs> so if I just like stick a little plastic BB in the center of my hollow points, they're See, not magically, hollow points anymore. It's not a hollow point anymore. Oh, it's... yeah. Very clever. Yeah. See, it's not hollow. <laughs> it's full. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I just, the hashtag all the fans. Yeah. Mm. Watch me insert this plastic into a hole. <laughs> Let me put. I'm gonna put yeah. the BB in the hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watch me fill. Watch me fill this hole with melted plastic. All right. Uh, restaurant bailout problem. Under our uh, unemployment pays more. Yeah. Well, this is uh this is actually <laughs> this is actually a situation here in California. Um. So everybody who's ever fucking every liberal or lefty who's ever bitched at me for saying that government programs disincentivize work and people taking care of themselves and things like that everyone who's ever made fun of me for sharing a don't feed the humans it makes them dependent meme you know listen to this fucking story um yeah yeah, and it's normally normally unemployment doesn't pay this much but because of the care bailout that congress passed it's like an additional six hundred dollars a week yep yeah extra six hundred a week and and by my if math, you can get it, yeah. 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 By my math, forty hours at fifteen dollars an hour is six hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. Hey, there you go. And that that's six hundred dollars plus whatever the state kicks in, which I think in California is like three seventy or something like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, you're making like nine hundred and fifty dollars a week to stay at home. Yeah, yeah, that is that does pay way more. Yeah, because that's that got brought up to me the other day because our the the company that I work for just had to furlough 450 people um, for 60 days. And are these they, payments taxed too? Yeah. They, well, I don't know if the 600 is taxed. Is it? I don't. I don't. I have no idea. Because no, taxation is theft. Yeah, the yeah. rest of unemployment is taxed, but okay. Um, yeah. They, you have the option to not have them take taxes out. You yeah. can tell them, no, I don't want you to take taxes out because, I mean, you're making usually not now, but usually you're making so little on unemployment. There's no point. It's not yeah. going to be enough. Yeah, it so. actually it actually says in the article uh, down here that um, <clears throat> the average uh, the average weekly benefit nationwide was three hundred and seventy dollars. And then on top of that, you would get the six hundred. Wow! Yeah, so nine hundred seventy dollars a week. They to tripled. Be unemployed. They tripled unemployment essentially. That's way more money than I make. I am very upset by this. <laughs> That's yeah. that nine, was... Okay, not, uh, put it like nine seventy a week at fifty two weeks is fifty thousand four hundred forty dollars a year. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. like an extremely respectable middle class income. Yeah, and yeah. we because because that got discussed the other, just the other day at work because I was like I was concerned. I was it's, like, well, what happens if they furlough us too? Like, I'm not I I can't afford to have no income coming in, and I got I got told, well, no, right. you just got to apply for unemployment because you get that extra six hundred, so you'll actually be making more money anyway. All right, nine <laughs> nine seventy a week at forty hours. Comes out to twenty four dollars and twenty five cents an hour. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's get let's get to the article. It says, uh, uh, "Restaurants say the industry needs its own targeted recovery fund because the bailout package Congress passed last month is making it more attractive for their staff to draw unemployment benefits than to continue working." The new Paycheck Protection Program waives repayment of small business loans if the borrower spends. Or the borrower uses 75% of the money to maintain payroll, a measure intended to reduce layoffs. But with the expanded unemployment benefits included in the stimulus bill, some workers can make can make as much as double their weekly checks if they stay unemployed. The mismatch <coughs> is particularly acute for restaurants, cafes, and small or cafes and small shops, non-essential businesses where pay scale trends tend to be low. That have uh, that have been put into indefinite hibernation. 
the National Restaurant Association told Congress Monday that more than 60% of restaurant owners believe existing assistance programs, including the PPP, that's the Paycheck Protection Program, are insufficient to keep employees on payroll and ask for $240 billion in aid targeted to their industry. Wow. Yeah, restaurants represent less than 9% of the Paycheck Protection Loan recipients, but as of March, accounted for the majority of layoffs nationwide as the contagion took hold. Quote, if the intention was to get people back to work, they're not doing it. Uh, Says Tom uh, Cholisho, uh, the renowned uh, restaurateur and top chef judge, who has been an advocate for small restaurants during the pandemic. Quote, they're not going to come back to work because unemployment is too attractive. Unemployment vis- unemployment benefits unemployment benis- benefits vary by state, but in 2019, before the coronavirus, the average weekly benefit nationwide was $370. A $600 sweetener to that stimulus bill added on a temporary basis to weekly unemployment checks raises the average raises the average above uh, nine hundred seventy dollars an amount that approximately that approximates average weekly pay nationwide and is nearly double average weekly pay within the food industry about five hundred dollars nationwide for full time workers. <sighs> yes, yeah, that's uh. Kind but it of doesn't re- disincentivize working. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it to- totally not. Like, I mean, like, not, like nine hundred seventy dollars at forty hours a week. Like we said, comes out to like twenty four, twenty five an hour. Twenty twenty four dollars, twenty five cents an hour. Not like, only are they getting triple what unemployment would have been and making more than they would have working, but they don't have to work and put up with the fucking Karens of the world and spend all day <laughs> on their feet. And I mean, like, even and if they, this was like a hundred bucks a week less than what they would make, a lot of them would still fucking be choosing this because it's also a lot less fucking headaches and hassle and work. Oh yeah, so. I've had I've had people come in come into the store a couple of times in like masks and stuff. These like boomers that'll come in and be like, "Oh well, you should you should make sure you know you better be staying home." And I'm like. You literally just came into my yeah. fucking store. If yeah. I was staying home, there'd be nobody here to help you. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, wh- what? That doesn't... Well, none of that makes sense. But I get that same crap. You see that from people all the time. Where they're yeah. like, oh, well, you need to make sure you're taking care of yourself. As I demand that you serve me right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> And it's... So my dad is, is in construction. Uh, my dad, my my dad, and my brother, they both work for a construction company. They do remodeling specifically, and they are very, very, very good at their job. My dad has like, uh, I think at this point in time, he has he has like twenty eight years in the industry, mm. and um, he makes twenty five dollars an hour. So yeah. these people, these people, because they don't want to go to work, are making seventy five cents an hour less to sit at uh, home than my right. dad, who was been in the construction industry for 28 years they think right. about what a big boom that is to your bottom line your personal bottom line suddenly you went from being a struggling restaurant worker to making 50k a year yeah uh-huh. and not even having to work for it so you got time to like work on a side hustle if you want yeah. hashtag you know? hashtag only fans oh yeah <laughs> be making porn and selling it online and you can yeah. totally afford a nice camera to make that yeah because you, you make a ton of money every week <laughs> yep you could afford some Facebook advertising too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just like that's an insane amount of money, like nine hundred and seventy dollars a week, on average. Right. So some people are making more than that. So some people are making like like over a thousand dollars a week to stay yeah. at home. Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's insane. That is more. That is more money. They bring, they're bringing in more money than I bring in working yep. under normal circumstances. And like right now, I'm not even working because I'm closed on Tuesdays in addition to Sundays now. So now I'm working even less than I normally would. So my paychecks are even smaller than they would normally be. This is looking kind of attractive. Like I'm going, ah, actually, you know, being fired wouldn't be all that bad or being laid off. You know, I can, right. I can deal with that. That's uh, <laughs> That's a decent amount of money. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, there's there's also going to talk about this one uh, business, uh, Dunn Brothers Coffee. It's in the uh, Minneapolis area. Um, he says that uh, only forty percent of full fo- of for of furloughed workers actually return to work. Huh. So. And the, the Minnesota, the $600 sweetener raises the average weekly unemployment benefits above $1,000. Oh. On average per week. Yes. Wow. Jesus. Let's see. Uh, in Ohio, um, workers receive uh, $963 a week. It's crazy. Yeah. It's a huge amount of money. Wow. Uh, and it's not like that's that's all all that money is just magically being created. Like there's no actual value being created here. Right. It's being pulled and reshuffled. Like you gotta remember. Yeah, imprinted. This isn't, imprinted. Yeah. 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 This isn't just like this magical, oh, we're adding value. No, you're pulling value from one part of the con- economy, sh- sh- siphoning it through a bunch of bureaucracy, and then trying to pump it into another part of the economy. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't help like, anything. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the bailout, or I'm sorry, the, the, the stimulus bill, the CARES bill, was what? Like $2.1 trillion or $2.3 trillion or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Just like this, like the 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 fiscal deficit this for this year is going to be like four trillion dollars. Ridiculous. <sighs> That's a deficit. That's money that we don't even fucking. Have. Yeah, it's being borrowed against your future labor. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, which is never going to be paid off. The dollar is going to collapse, yeah. and yeah, yeah. I still have my own theory on that about Cloward Pippin, but. Yeah, that's, a, that's another show. Yeah, you guys and, both know. I've talked to you guys about it. Yeah, that's, that's agendas, a show unto itself. Certain agendas that have certain numbers after them, and yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, all right, yeah. let's. Um, what all are right, we gonna finish up with? That's that's a that's a dead horse. Um, let's talk about. <laughs> um, I know Andrew wants to talk about. Let's talk about Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, My neighboring state, the Mitten. Yeah, militia or Michigan militia puts armed protest in the spotlight. This is not a HuffPo article. We covered HuffPo before, and I got sick to the stomach, so we're gonna go with a different. This is uh, <laughs> this is this is WGBH News. It's a local station. Yeah, um, gun carrying. Gun carrying protesters have been a common sight at the demist- at some demonstrations, calling for coronavirus related restrictions to be lifted. But an armed militia's involvement in the in an angry protest in the Michigan State House Thursday marked an escalation that drew <laughs> condemnation and shone a spotlight on the practice of bringing weapons to protests. Um. <sighs> That's yeah, literally that. why we have them. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, and there and there's been articles that are like, oh, well, they only have them for intimidation. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the like, fucking point. When, yeah. when you see lawmakers in the state house wearing body wearing body armor, yeah. hypothetically, that's a good start. Yeah. 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 Because now and there's Kevin. And read that story to me the other day about the the lawmakers wearing body armor and I'm like if you have to fucking wear body armor to protect yourself from the people you're pissing off with the laws that you're passing you might want to take a second look at what you're fucking doing I mean your own people want to fucking hurt you for this don't claim to be a public servant anymore (laughs) if you're going to go through with it and there's so much fear mongering and fear porn and all this other stuff. Like there's what was the, the, the one tweet that I shared. It's like this, um, some blue check guy. And he's like, he's like, this is not what we do in America. Yeah. 
Yeah, I had to mean that. Where he's like, he, yeah, he was like armed, armed intimidation of gov- of government officials is not is not something we do in America. And That's I, literally I, why America yeah. exists. Holy yeah, shit. I put I, I attached it to a, just that picture of Ben Franklin looking very disappointed, and it said, "I can if not even." Like yeah. <laughs> he always looked disappointed. My twenties always yeah. looked disappointed in me. Dear, yeah, you're hundreds, not, hundreds. You're, there you go. Oh, you're, sorry. You're, you're covering the mic. Sorry, but, I was. Yeah, I've got a knot in my shoulder. Um, yeah, I was just saying Ben Franklin always looks disappointed. My hundreds always look fucking disappointed. Yeah, I was just like. <laughs> That's because he's on a fiat currency. All right. Yeah. The American Patriot Rally. <laughs> I have such a hard time reading that. The American Patriot Rally started on the State House steps where members of the Michigan Liberty Militia stood guard with weapons and tactical gear, their faces partially covered. The later, the latter. Is- moved- <laughs> Aren't they supposed to have that? Yeah, I was <laughs> just going to say. That's, that's the law. This is partially covered. <laughs> right. They, the, they later moved inside the Capitol along with several hundred protesters who demanded to be let onto the House floor, which is prohibited. Some protesters with guns, which are allowed in the State House, went to the Senate gallery where a senator said some armed men shouted at her, and some protesters or some senators wore bulletproof vests. This is just starting to get actually good. Like, yeah. this is. Shit, this for, should be fucking happening. Yeah. You're not allowed on the floor of the Senate. Fucking walk on the floor of the yeah. Senate. And and for, for accuracy's sake, there's no such thing as a bulletproof vest. There are bullet-resistant yeah. vests. Well, yeah, right. and if you actually look at what they're wearing in the photos, most oh, of it looks like it's, it's all, like level two. It's all soft yeah. armor, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like level two. So a, which, all of these guys that are carrying what, ARs, yeah. ARs, that, that bullet doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's no. literally like wearing a heavy jacket to that. Yeah. yeah. Um, for some observers, the image of armed men in tactical gear at a state capitol <laughs> were an upsetting combo of rising, an upsetting symbol of rising tensions in a nation grappling with crisis. Others saw evidence of <laughs> racial bias in the way the protesters were treated by police. Oh, for God's sake. They always oh. got to make it. They can't, even when it's a mixture, even when the armed protest is a mixture of races, they still have to figure out a way to try and pretend that it's about race. Yeah. So the protest could be equal parts every fucking race in this nation. And the cops force could be the same. And still, somehow, it would be about fucking oh, and- race. This is this. These are the same media and the same people that openly supported. I don't know the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah, yeah. Just, just saying. Just putting that out there. All right. For some politicians, there was fresh evidence of the risk of aligning with a movement with clear ties to far right groups. Huh. Prominent Michigan Republicans on Friday criticized the showing with the GOP leader leader of the state Senate referring to some protesters as, quote, a bunch of jackasses who used intimidation and the threat of physical harm to stir up fear and feed rancor. So literally what you do every fucking day at your job. (laughs) Yeah, they don't like the turnabout. That's exactly what government is and how it fucking operates. Yeah. That's your literal fucking job. You're mad that the people are doing it back to you. Which yeah. is exactly what the second amendment What they should was be doing for. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yes. It's just um, I'm not going to read the Trump quote cuz fuck Trump. All right. Uh, Michigan has been in the epic center of political showdown over how to contain the spread of the deadly virus without decim- without decimating the economy. About a quarter of the state's workforce has filed for unemployment and nearly 4,000 people have died. No, oh, no. Compare that to your auto accident statistics for a year and let's see where things are at. Yeah. Like <laughs> Are you kidding me? But you know, it's funny. The actually, I the the Trump quote's funny because Trump support said that he supported what these guys did. Uh, he called like, he called like, them he called them very good people. Yes. Yeah. And so he's, and that goes back to what I've been saying basically since he was elected, which is this guy is a psyop. He is a controlled opposition psyop. Every time these protesters do stuff, you'll notice 
they're carrying Trump flags and waving American flags and they're all being pro Trump, which mm-hmm. is hilarious because. I mean, it's so transparent. It's so transparent that what he's trying to do constantly when he says these things is keep that going because as long as they still have their guy and they're like, oh, well, he'll save us, they won't ever actually put their money where their mouth is. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, um, and it goes on to talk about, uh, to rally organizer Ryan Kelly said the event was intended to pressure Republicans to reject Whitmer's plan to continue restrictions on work and travel. He called the protest, quote, a huge win, noting that Republican-controlled Senate refused to extend Whitmer's coronav- coronavirus emergency declaration, though she said Friday her stay-at-home, stay-at-home order will remain in effect. She actually continued it on her own without, this, without the Senate or, yeah, she or the did win- yeah, when the when the yeah. legislature said no, she just went, well, but I have all the power, so I'm just going to say do it anyway. And the yeah. cops are going to go ahead and do it. Yep. They're going to enforce it. Yep. Yeah. Even though it's not a law, it's a fucking unilateral executive order. Um, they're still going to fucking enforce it. Yeah, I got news yeah. for that guy. It's like, this isn't what we do in America about the armed protest. No, that is what we do in America. What we don't aren't supposed to be doing in America is the single person making an arbitrary declaration that then gets enforced with violence against people. That right. is not what we're supposed to be doing in America. Right. <laughs> like, you got it backwards, dude. They're trying to preserve some semblance of what America was founded around. This chick is just trampling all over it. Yeah. Yeah, and then the rest of the article is literal liberal garbage. I'm sure. A whole bunch of propaganda and BS, and but it does say that there was a also an organized rally in Wisconsin of about a dozen men, several wearing camouflage. They carried what appeared to be assault weapons and other long guns and stood around a makeshift guillotine at a protest attended by about 1,500 people. Yeah, that was in Madison. That was a protest that I wish I would have been able to go to, but I had to work. Uh, <laughs> otherwise... But um, that one actually got so bad. And we talked about it last week when Chris was on. Um, that one got so bad that the National Guard actually got called out to oh. do crowd control and try and intentionally route cars in the most circuitous route they could so that people wouldn't get there in time. Yeah. Huh. They like oh. had roadblocks set up with like armored vehicles from the National Guard to redirect traffic. Wow. It was ridiculous. It was absolutely oh. ridiculous. So, but yeah, um... This is a yeah. good thing. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. like like people we we talked about it before about how Trump was the I don't know, the great neuterer or whatever you want to call it of of the militia movement. Right? right. Like we had we had we had As long as years, they feel represented, they won't yeah. fucking do shit. Yeah, we had we had 8 years of Obama, right? building up the militia movement like ever everybody was preppers guns and ammo were flying off the shelves people were training there was militia groups and militia rallies all over social media and then trump gets into office and they all lose their balls yep and then it only took them what like four years to find them yeah Yeah, and they only sort of found them because they're still waving donald trump flags Oh, you still see it's fucking funny, disgusting. It's just Ugh. like it. It's so ironic to me because it's like seriously, you're <laughs> you're protesting a tyrannical government by waving a flag of the head of that tyrannical government. Yep. Yeah. What? Well, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and tout it and touting the Constitution, which yeah, yeah, yeah. which so. Trump has obviously doesn't care about and doesn't follow and which means yeah. none take of them the guns do. first and do process second <laughs> yeah uh no. doesn't care about yes yes yeah. Yeah. um i don't know i like it i like it i think that's starting to put yeah. pressure on things and um uh, make politicians <sighs> afraid of the people again that's how right. it was always yeah. supposed to be i mean aside from the fact that i don't want any fucking government at all right this is what we have right now so fucking make them afraid they're uh-huh. supposed to be afraid of us yep Make yeah. tar, and, tar and feathering great again. Yeah, yeah. That, is, that is literally the purpose of the Second Amendment. The reason it was written oh. is specifically for this. Yes. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I mean, literally, so literally, literally, the Declaration of Independence. 
Like, there's literally a line yep. in it about throwing off the yoke of oppression and overthrowing a tyrannical government. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it doesn't say that you have a right. <laughs> it the, says you have an obligation. obligation. Yeah. yeah. At the very it. beginning, dissolve a government. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or dissolve ties with the government. Yep. Yeah. And that's like all of the founding fathers talked about how you're obligated to throw off this oppression. You're obligated to make sure that the politicians stay afraid of the American populace and are actually worried that oh. they might wind up getting tarred and feathered or strung up if they piss people off too much. And so it keeps them honest. Like that's the I- entire idea right. behind writing the Bill of Rights the way that they did. And yet you still have all of these tyrants that are now pissed off that all of a sudden this is how it's getting used. Yeah. Well, of course they're pissed off because (laughs) tyrants never want people to stand up for themselves. But but what kills me is the people who the petty tyrants, the fucking Karens of the world that say shit like this isn't how we do things in America. (laughs) That's Do you even know what America literally is? How oh, like countries. all you did was yeah. just tell me that you have no idea what America actually is. Yeah, you like I feel like you don't do this in America. That was literally how this country was started. I feel like yes. handing you handing you like a, a a textbook on the American Revolution so yeah. you could maybe reference slap them <laughs> with it. Yeah, like, what do you mean yes. this isn't how we do? This is exactly why this country even exists. All right, um, okay. He's, it's a, a Fred Gutenberg. He's a blue check. And it says, what the fuck? Not what we do in America. Uh, no more bullshit about protecting 2A. Arrest them. Uh, and then my response was, not what we do in America. How the fuck does he think this country was funded in the first place? They shot yeah. their oppressors in the fucking face. Yeah. Like, and then I said that the, this whole, the whole, that whole revolutionary war thing wasn't a rousing game of tennis with a gentleman's bet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They didn't, it they was didn't decide literally to... shooting and killing tyrants. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't just march in the streets with signs and wine. They <laughs> shot people. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, all right. I just got. I got one more quick one, and I only want to say it. We don't need to debate <coughs> it, but it says, um, uh, "King County." That's King County, Washington. They're providing beer and cigarettes to keep addicts uh, in rehab during quarantine. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to, uh, it's, uh, yeah. Oh man. Wow. Uh, yeah. Um, county officials are giving them cigarettes, beer, and up till a week ago, marijuana edibles. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I love how you know, and that's the funny thing is, I love how uh, marijuana is illegal on a federal level, and there's still people trying to do the fear mongering about it as a gateway drug, and yet it's also been declared essential everywhere it's legal, and they're uh. intentionally gi- <laughs> the government is giving THC edibles to, to drug addicts to calm them down and to keep, yeah. to keep them in to keep them in quarantine yeah, and shelter in place, leaving. Yeah, yeah. like. Just... <laughs> and don't oh. get me wrong, I love cigarettes, beer, and marijuana. Okay, but it's a good party. But the government does not need to be providing these things <laughs> to people. Yeah. No. <laughs> here's, here's your unemployment check. Here's a twelve pack. Here's a half ounce. Yeah. <laughs> My sister's dispensary. Please, please stay. Is still... Hashtag. Please stay inside. My sister's dispensary <laughs> is doing brisk business still. Oh, They're still sure. making money hand over fist right now. Oh, for sure. There's, there's, there's a, there's not a line at my local grocery store, but there is a line at my local dispensary. I bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everybody's getting their stimulus checks. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like, hell yes. <laughs> well, and now you're also getting a, almost a thousand dollars a week in unemployment benefits too. So yeah. Hey, you can sit around and just smoke tons and tons uh-huh. of pot. My dad yeah. mentioned that to me on the phone today about uh, people yeah. like getting their six hundred dollar checks and heading in there and yeah. He's like, Don't they have bills to pay? <laughs> yeah, and we don't have any uh we don't have any fees on, on Grubhub right now either. <laughs> they wa- they waived all the like they waived all the fees on Grubhub and Uber Eats, so you don't yeah. really have to go sit in the Taco Bell drive thru anymore. 
Yeah, Grubhub, Uber Eats, and Bite Squad have all sent me like free delivery things, which makes me laugh because almost no one uses them around here. Everybody's set up with Eat Street. So like, yeah. if you want food, you pretty much have to order through Eat Street anyway. And yeah. they're not doing free delivery. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> nope, screw you. We're making money, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So. Yeah, free freebies are what businesses do when they need more business. <laughs> yeah, they have plenty right now. <laughs> so, all right. On that note, this has been episode ninety-two. Self-licking ice cream cone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good OnlyFans name. Just saying. Yeah. Ice cream. <laughs> well, That's on that note, some weird fetishes. <laughs> <laughs> don't kink, don't kink shame me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace. Yeah.